Praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to PIWC Worcester Virtual Sunday Service. We thank you for, for joining us for fellowship this morning. We know you're going to be blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Come on. Wherever you are, put your hands together. Come on.
Just open your mouth and begin to worship our maker. Worship this one true God, this everlasting God. Worship him wherever you are this morning. Give him all that is due him. Yes, Lord, we worship you. We come before you this morning. Father God, with our hands raised, Lord Jesus, just to say glory and honor be unto you. All glory and honor be unto you, Jesus. For you have won it all for us, Jesus.
watching over us and you are protecting us and so we simply just want to say thank you we simply just want to honor you Lord we just want to worship your holy name we thank you Lord we honor you we 
worship you in this place. In Jesus' matchless name. personal and say I bow down and worship I bow down I bow down Lord I bow down and worship cause you are Yahweh That's who you are. You are Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. He is Lord. You are Yahweh. Oh. Begin to bless the name of the Lord. Somebody. Handelebo. Sitai andelelele hatosi. Mandelebo. Si andelebere andalabra. Rando sita brande rebe 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 Rando sutayanda brande lebe rebe Masande rebo suka brande lebe We bow, we bow, we bow, we bow, we bow Mane lebo si ande reba sande rebo We worship you Lord, we honor you Jesus Mando si kandara para Yahweh Yahweh, Yahweh, that's your name, oh God, that's your name, Jesus, oh Yahweh, Yahweh, oh Yahweh. Have your way, O oh God, in our mess this morning. Take absolute control, O oh God. May your presence be felt tangibly in the midst of your people. In Jesus' name. Shall we all shout a big amen? Amen. Praise the Lord, church. We bless the name of God for what he has done, what he continues to do. And for bringing us all here once again to worship. If you have not shared the link, I beseech thee in Christ that do so. Call your friends, call your colleagues. Even as we all sit under the feet of Jesus, study his word and be blessed and edified. We give God all glory for what he's done in the past couple of weeks and what he is still doing in our midst. We thank God for the week-long week celebration of the youth ministry and also the men's ministry. I'm sure your wife did you good. I'm sure your daughters and sons did you good. So once again, thank all the wonderful dynamic men that are doing that which pleases the Lord. This morning, we want to just continue with our series. Uh, we took a little break because of the various programs that I just mentioned. And we want to go back and try to finish up this week and the subsequent weeks what we had started, which is stand properly armed. Stand properly armed. Last week, we last couple of weeks actually, we were able to go through uh, the shield of faith, the shield of faith, which we learned that with which we will be able to 
defend ourselves against the fiery darts of the enemy. Scripture says to quench the fiery darts of the enemy. Today we want to continue from where we ended, and that is the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. And so we just want to take our theme scripture quickly. If you don't mind, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6, reading from 14 downwards. Ephesians chapter 6, reading from 14. It says, Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shut your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And verse 17, which is our focus this morning, says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to the end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Amen. This morning, we want to focus on the verse 17 that says, take the helmet of salvation. Now, you realize that in a physical battle, as Paul is describing a Roman soldier, he would have a helmet on. Now, the purpose of that in a physical battle is basically to prevent you from being hit by an incoming fire, right? Your head gets hit, you're gone. And so they have helmets on to protect them against the plans and the arrows and the fiery darts of the enemy as well. But in a spiritual battle, which you and I are in, we're not warring against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Bible says that this helmet actually protects our mind, protects our mind from the distorted worldview in which we find ourselves in. And so you realize that there are so many things going on. There's so many noises, but few truth. There's so many rumors, a few authentic word. When you have your helmet of salvation and as a believer, you protect your mind against the distortions that goes on, against the lies that goes on, against the rumors that goes on, because we want to stay true to the word of God and true to who we are. So this morning I pray that even as we go through these studies, you would find a place and take your helmet of salvation, put it on so that you'll be able to stand even in these evil days that we find ourselves in Jesus' mighty name. Now, this head of ours, as we all know, contains, as the scientists would say, two components, a white and a gray matter, right? They are cells. Now, that would be what a scientist would actually describe that to you. I want to kind of have you think about it more in the spiritual sense, right? Because even though they are white and matter, gray, and matter, white matter and gray matter substances, if you will, our brain contains a place in there called our mind. That is our cognitive sense of things. That is our perception sense of things. That is where we feel, that's where we think, right? And so when the enemy is able to penetrate through that mind of yours, if he's able to infiltrate, what he does is he changes your mindset. If your mindset is changed, your worldview changes. If your worldview changes, your perception to life also changes. And so you begin to see things in line with what your mind tells you, in line with what that worldview depicts. And so if God says you are saved and other worldview says you are not, you begin to think that you are not, except you are. And so this morning, that is what we want to focus on. Putting on the helmet of salvation actually defines our identity, and it also gives us the authority. Knowing who you are determines what you have. Knowing what you have determines what you can do. And therefore, we're praying this morning that we don't lose our identity as believers. Therefore, put on the helmet of salvation. Oh, hallelujah. The agenda of the enemy, so to speak. So this is a battle game, right? It's a mind battle. It's a mind game. What it says is the whole agenda of this enemy is to cause us to think differently from what God says we are. That's number one. Number two, it causes us to perceive ourselves differently from what God says we are. It makes us anxious when we should be walking in victory. That's what it does. 
It makes us feel guilty and filthy and, you know, don't, don't belong. When, as a matter of fact, we are justified. It causes us to be desperate in difficult times instead of being hopeful by faith. That is what the enemy wants you and I to begin to think. But this morning we are praying in the name of Jesus that as we put on our helmet of salvation, our mindset, our worldview, our perception to life, the way we see ourselves in the light of the word of God will be intact. That nothing the enemy says will take us away from that purpose which God has called you and I into, even in the mighty name of Jesus. So the question is, what do you think about? Even in this self-quarantining time, in this self-isolation time, in this difficult, you know, seemingly hopeless season, what do you think about? What saturates your mind? What preoccupies your mindset? Because that would determine what your next move is. So remember that whatever dominates your mind is what controls you. Let me repeat that. Anything that dominates your mind is what controls you. If you have a thought so prevailing and so strong that it dominates your mind, it actually controls you and therefore propels you to do likely that mindset is telling you. You are inclined to do what that thought makes you think you can do. And therefore, what controls you makes you. As I perceive myself to be, so I am. As a person sees himself to be, so he is. I've always said here that you can never achieve what you cannot perceive. Your perception gives you a drive to achieve. If you have no perception, there's no drive for achievement. And therefore, if your mindset makes you perceive something, then the inclination is you are propelled towards achieving that thing. If your mindset makes you feel and look down upon yourself, then you begin to look down upon yourself. On the other hand, if the mindset makes you look more than a conqueror, your perception to life is I can do it. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Then there is a propelling, a yearning, a staring in the spirit that makes you want to do that which this mind begins to dictate to you. I am praying in the name of Jesus that you will see through the lens of God. You will think the way God thinks. You will see yourself to be exactly what God says you are so that you begin to walk in them and not give in for the enemy to distort our minds and bring lies and infiltrations of filth, even in the mighty name of Jesus. All that the enemy wants to do is that you would not think of yourself as God thinks of you. So the moment you think less of what God thinks about you, you begin to think more of what the enemy thinks about you. Think about it. The moment your mind is preoccupied with failure, you begin to think more of what the enemy wants you to think and actually less of what God says you are. But this morning we have a helmet of salvation on and therefore nothing can distort our mindset and what God has purposed for us, even in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, I want to read two scriptures because Paul had a concern and a caution. So he was worried about the believers that there is something that he's discerned that if he doesn't talk about it, could lead to the distortion of their mindset. I want to read two scriptures here and then we'll go on. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 2 and 4. 2 Corinthians 11, 2 to four. It says, For I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. This is Paul talking. For I have betrothed you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. That is his desire. That as I am the apostle of God, as I have uh, I've been placed in charge of you and I'm teaching you and I'm mentoring you and I'm shepherding you, my desire is that you will be engaged to one husband. Who is that husband? Christ Jesus. And that your focus, your mind, your purpose in life will be so much oriented to this husband called Christ Jesus. And you will remain chaste like a virgin ready to receive this bridegroom called Jesus. Verse 3 though says, but I fear lest someone somehow as a serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness saw your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that comes in Christ. 
That is a profound statement. In this contemporary world, in this postmodern world, there is the tendency that the simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ will become too low for some. That they would want to hear some new revelations, some new things that nobody has ever thought of to make them feel more edified. That was Paul's fear back in the days, and it is still today. But I fear lest somehow, as a serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ Jesus. For he who comes preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached. Or if you receive a different spirit which you have not received or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you may put up with it. That was his fear. That someone may come and preach some different gospel. Someone and come and manifest some different spirit manifestation, if you will. And we will just put up to it. That was his fear. Why? Because we are losing our identity, which comes from the mindset that is focused on the simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am praying in the name of Jesus. That same message that saved Paul back in the days, that same message that saved your grandmother and your grandfather, that same message that saved somebody last week, that same message that saved you and I, is the same message that saves people. It has not changed. But the enemy will make you think that there's something else that you need to look for. There is nothing except Christ Jesus. Be content with the simplicity that comes from the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because that is your helmet of salvation. That is your identity. That is what makes who you are in Christ. Simple men, ordinary men, giving power and authority to do extraordinary things. That is the message. Sinful men who couldn't save themselves but are saved by grace, prepared for good works. That is who you are. It is your helmet of salvation. I pray that that revelation comes to somebody, even in the mighty name of Jesus. And number two, Colossians 2.8. Colossians 2.8. This is what Paul is saying. He says, beware, beware, watch out, be vigilant, keep your eyes open, be alert, lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit. According to the traditions of men, oh hallelujah, beware church, beware whoever you, wherever you are listening to me, lest people cheat you with empty words and philosophy, empty deceit, according to the traditions of men and according to the basic principles of this world, of this world. You want a cool message? You want a lit message? You want a trending message? Make sure it's aligned to Christ Jesus. If someone were to come to you and says, I've had this revelation that no one else has had, watch out. Because that's what scripture is saying. Beware, lest anyone cheat you through philosophy, empty deceit, according to the traditions of men, according to the basic principles of this world, and not according to Christ. For in him, talking about Christ, dwells all, not most, not some, but all, the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And I like the 10. And you are complete in him. Oh, hallelujah. You and I are complete in Christ. It doesn't matter how simplistic the message is. It doesn't matter how simplistic the salvation gospel is. We are in complete, complete in him. We lack nothing. But beware. Lest people cheat you of philosophy, tricky words, deceitful words, eloquence that is not based on Christ, but based on the principles of this world. You are complete. And then he ends and says, who is the head of all principalities and power? That is our focus this morning. That as we put the helmet of salvation on, our mindset our perception, our focus, our philosophy, if you will, would be Christ. Nothing else but Christ. Because that is who we are, and knowing who you are confirms your authority. And I pray that as we war, not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, 
spiritual warfare, you will stand knowing who you are. You will mount your podium and say, I have the authority of Christ. Why? Because I am redeemed of the Lord. That is who you are, even in the mighty name of Jesus. Even as we go on, how do I then put on my helmet of salvation, pastor? How do I do that? A couple of things and then we will pray. Romans chapter 8, verse 1 to 4. Romans 8, 1 to 4. Number one, know who you are in Christ Jesus, which is what I just said. But this one read Romans 8. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. End of story. If you are sitting back home listening to me, you are doubting, you're not sure. Scripture says, therefore, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Period. As long as you are in Christ, there is no condemnation. As long as you are in Christ, you are no longer guilty. As long as you are in Christ, you are redeemed. Period. Why? For who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Those who are in Christ do not walk in the flesh. They are not carnally minded. They walk according to the spirit. I pray that that's you. That you don't play church. But you are truly a replica of those who walk not in the carnal mind, but in the spirit. Verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. Somebody say free. Free. From the law of sin and death. Oh, how I pray that somebody is not being held captive with the old sin and the present sin and the sins that would come. You've been set free. Begin to walk in it. Let the spirit take that step and you follow. Let the spirit edify you and you get up from where you are. Shake yourself off the dust and begin to walk and you walk according to the spirit. But the enemy will make you think otherwise. And you feel so belittled and guilty that you can't even move and do anything for Christ. This morning I pray that as you put your helmet of salvation on, this revelation will come to you. That those who are in Christ, there's no condemnation. Why? Because they don't think carnally, they think spiritually. Therefore, they walk spiritually. Let me jump all the way to verse 4. That the righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled according to the Spirit. In other words, whatever it is that prevented us from becoming the likeness of God, the likeness of Christ Jesus. That which was sin has already been paid by Christ Jesus. For that reason, I'm not condemned. I've been justified. I'm no longer guilty. I'm free. Free to walk and pursue the destiny that God has in store for me. And I pray that that mindset, that worldview, that perception will be yours, even in the name of Jesus you are not condemned because you are redeemed. Therefore, think, walk, and act, even in accordance to that which God has given you, freely given you through Christ Jesus. So number one, know who you are. As the songwriter says, I know who I am. Somebody you might want to say that, I know who I am. If the enemy come knocking and telling me tales and lies and other things, right, did God say, are you sure God said that? Are you sure you said, yeah, 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 I know who I am. For I'm in Christ, therefore there's no condemnation. Number two, Know who you are in Christ. And number two is yield to the transformation power of the word. Yield to the transformation power of the word. Why? Because we need to renew our minds. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I want to spend some few minutes here even as we go through this. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech thee, Paul talking to the church in Rome, that you... Present your bodies a living sacrifice. I, I, I beg thee that you marinate yourself in the spices of Christ Jesus. Get, get in there, you know, soak yourself in there. Mix yourself up in that grace that has been given freely to you. Why? Because he's going to do something to you. And he says that you will present yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Do not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Think of it as God trying to put you on a barbecue grill, spiritual barbecue. He's marinating you, changing your original taste and smell, making you spicy. 
that you have a great order that resembles Christ. And as he puts you on that grill, and the fire of the Holy Spirit is burning all the chaff, burning all the fat, burning all the sins, burning all the weaknesses, burning all that, what you are turning to be is this new image. Why? Your mind is renewing. Your mindset is renewing. Your perception is renewing. The way you used to look at yourself is changing. I was blind, but now I see. I was poor, but now I'm rich. I couldn't do anything, but now I've been edified. That is what God is trying to tell us. I am praying in the name of Jesus that the key is yield. Somebody yield. Just lay on that grill. Just lay on that altar. Have him marinate you, spice you up, so that as he burns all the filthy thoughts out of you, the ungodly thoughts out of you, your mind is renewed. And you become who he says you are. It is amazing that some of us have been Christians, believers for long, but our mindsets have not changed. The way we used to do things back in the day, 5, 10, 15 years ago, is the same way we do things. The way we used to perceive things 5, 10, 15 years ago is the same way we perceive things. Our understanding has not changed. Oh, how I pray that this morning the Lord will touch somebody. Renew your mind. Renew your mind. Change your perception to life. Know that you are a child of God. If you are a child of God, you walk and talk like a child of God. You behave like a child of God. But you got to have to yield so that he will be able to work in you. Romans 8, 5, 7. Romans 8, 5 to 7. For those who live according to the flesh, listen this, to this carefully. Those who live according to the flesh, they set their minds on things of the flesh. That's profound. Anybody whose desire is on the flesh, carnal, they set their minds on things of the flesh. Why? Because that is what controls them. That is what consumes them. That is what dominates them. In contrast, but those who live according to the spirit, they set their minds on the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Oh, hallelujah. If you think carnally, it leads to death. Why? Because it will bring the infiltration of sin and filth. And that leads to death because that's the wages of it. But if you think spiritually, allow the spirit to speak through you, work through you, transform you, renew your mind. He says it brings what? Life and peace. I pray this morning that you will receive life and peace. Even in the midst of this chaos, receive life and peace. Why? Because you are spiritually minded. You know, moved by all the things that you see. I'm not saying be blind to them. Yes, they are. But you look at them through the lens of Christ Jesus. And therefore, you have life and a peace of mind. May you receive it, somebody. Even in the mighty name of Jesus. Because a carnal mind is enmity to God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor can it even be. I pray that we will yield to the transforming power of the word to renew our mind. Stay on that grill, somebody. Allow him to walk and work in you, that your mindset will be renewed, even in the name of Jesus. Number three, this is where we take some action. I have my helmet on. Refute the lies of the enemy by confessing the word. If God says this is who I am, then I better believe it and I better confess it. I better act it, walk in it. Show it that this is who I indeed am. Because God cannot be a liar. The scripture says, let all men be lies, but God be true. So refute all the lies that the enemy may confess to you. 2 Corinthians 10, 45. 2 Corinthians 10, 45. Let's read that quickly. It says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. For the pulling down of strongholds. 5 says, casting down arguments. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Let me repeat that. Casting down arguments. Casting down God, ungodly philosophies. Casting down this worldly reasoning and logics. And every high thing that attempts to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. 
If there's something that suppresses my knowledge of God, if something that puts me away from knowing God more, Scripture says that it is up to us, having our helmet of salvation on, to refute every high thing, every argument, every philosophy that rises itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing the thought, every thought, into captivity to the obedience of Christ Jesus. He's talking about you. If anything rises within your psyche, your subconsciousness, your consciousness, that is contrary to the things of God, Scripture says, bring it under the captivity and obedience of Christ Jesus. How do you do that? By the word. By the word. Makes me remember the enemy going to Jesus and tempting him, knowing that Jesus is indeed the word. Can you believe somebody trying to test the word with the word? And he says, it is written. We are praying that we would have that knowledge. And I'm not talking about um, 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 uh, um, intellectual knowledge, but revelation that we actually have the word to heart so that the enemy comes knocking in all directions. We'll be able to say, uh, 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 that is not what God says, but that says the Lord. Bringing every argument, every philosophy, any thought, that rises itself against the knowledge of God, we bring it under the captivity of Jesus Christ. That is putting on your helmet of salvation. Your authority and identity is at stake. Don't let anyone steal it from you because that is who God has made you. Casting down, refuting every argument contrary to God, number one. Number two, casting down every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And that is anything, anything, Number three, bring them into the captivity for every thought into the obedience of Christ Jesus. Basically, in short, confess the word. Just speak it. Let the enemy know who you are. Let the enemy know what the word of God has concerning your life because that is who you are. I pray this morning that everyone listening to me, you have your helmet of salvation on. Perhaps you don't even know what I'm talking about. We'll give you a chance to have that relationship. You don't pay nothing for it. It is given by grace. Come as you are. You also will be dawned with a helmet of salvation. It makes me think about people wearing MAGA um, red hats, right? Right? Make American great red hats working around. You know. Why are they so much enthused with it? They are buying into that philosophy. I pray that you will have your own MAGA hat, which is a helmet of salvation, knowing who you are. Buying into the philosophy that comes from heaven and every knowledge that is in Christ Jesus. Even as I wrap up quickly, I just want to conclude with Philippians 4, 8 to 9. Philippians 4, 8 to 9. Take the helmet of salvation, and I'm reading from Philippians 4, 8 to 9. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Other verses says, think about these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And the God of peace would be with you. Church, this morning, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just and pure, Whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if we need to have anything saturate our mind, if we need to give space for anything to infiltrate into our mind, Scripture says we should think about these things. Anything else should not have place in our minds. Even if they try to enter, they must be evicted immediately because they don't belong there. Filthy and evil and ungodly thoughts have no place in my mind. Because I have my helmet of salvation. Take it and put it on. Because that determines your identity and it manifests your authority. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May this revelation be real and tangible to you. That moving forward, your minds will be renewed and be conformed unto the things of God. That we walk by faith and not by sight. Knowing who we are. In Christ Jesus. God bless you. Even as we get into a time of prayer, I just want to give somebody a chance to have a relationship with this Lord. 
Because the scripture says, with our heart we believe, with our mouth we confess. You may be looking down upon yourself. Perhaps you've been saved many years ago, but you're doubting yourself at this point. Because perhaps you've just, you know, slipped a little bit and gotten into some places. Jesus says, welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. If you're here and you want to accept the Lord, we just want to give you that opportunity. Wherever you are, wherever you are, I just want to pray with you just a few minutes. Just say this simple prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for your word. And I thank you for inviting me. I confess this day that I am a sinner. And because of my sins, you came to die on the cross. This day, I accept you as my Lord, as my master, as my savior. Come and live in me. Adorn me with this helmet of salvation. Make me know the true identity that I have in you, Christ Jesus, and cause me to walk in it. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray this prayer with me, scripture says you are justified. Right now, you are also wearing the helmet of salvation. And whatever God has purpose concerning your life is unfolding right now. It's begun unfolding right now. Because that's who you are. May the Lord bless you for even coming into this family. In Jesus' name. At this point, we just want to lift our mouth and begin to thank God for his word. That he has seen us fit. Brought us into this grace. And adorned us with this salvation. This helmet of salvation, this identity that comes from salvation, this authority that comes from this salvation. Just open your mouth and begin to bless the name of the Lord. We bless you, Jesus. We give you all praise, we give you honor, we give you adoration. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mando boss. We give you all praise, we give you all praise, we give you all praise. Mande de boss, sutai and de bere bere boss, si hande de boss. Randa la ba ande de boss, sai ande de bere anda bra. Rabato sutole bere 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 boss ya. Mando ri masande de bere bere ando de boss. Lei kabrande ri mosi kandala brande de bere bere bere. Mando We bless you, Jesus. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a full taste of glory divine. I'm a heir of salvation Purchased of God Born of His Spirit Washed in His blood Blessed assurance Blessed assurance Jesus is mine. Oh, what a full taste of glory divine. Hair of salvation, purchased of God, God of the Spirit. in his blood this is a story this is a story this is my song praising my Savior all the day long this is my song This is my story. This is my story. Yes, it is. Yes. 
Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Oh, praise in my Savior. a story to tell. We have a story to manifest. We have a purpose to walk in. We pray that with the renewing of our mind from this day forward, we will not live that defeatist life. We will not live that mediocre life. We are created for His glory. We are walking in excellence. We are walking in victory. May the Spirit of God propel us on to doing new things. Lift up a prayer somebody and begin to walk in that purpose. Bravo! Sitelebolebosi! Mando riba handele, zapa pari hando robosi, reke beremo si telebele bele bos, raboto andelele, masu telebele bele bele bos handele, zapa pa luka bro sunole bere. We are changing our walk, oh God. We are changing our mindset, oh God. We are renewing our minds by the power of the Holy Ghost. We have our helmet of salvation now. We walk, oh God, in light with Your Word. We move, oh God, in light with Your Word. We act, oh God, in light with Your Word. Rapo si telebele bele 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 bos. Rapa tandele brosi. Rapa tayandele bro handele. Rika bos su telebele bosi andele. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Rapo si tayanda bra. We bless you, O oh God. We give you praise. Mandorobo sitabra. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hey, hey this is my story. Mm, this is my song. Oh, I'm praising my Savior. Oh. This is our prayer. For many years you've been a Christian, you've been a believer. Your mindset yet has still remained the same. For many years you've been a child of God, but you're struggling in certain areas concerning the truth of the Word of God. You know you battle in your spirit with some of them. To the point where the enemy even sometimes come close to letting you know that that's not true. Don't take it. Mm -mm. That does not affect you. That's not part of you. Granting you some new sort of interpretation and revelation that you want to be the way it should be. We are praying in the name of Jesus. It says, my fear is that some of you will be swayed away from the simplicity that comes with the gospel of Jesus Christ. The simplicity. We are praying that God may we not waver from this simple gospel truth. No matter how we grow and how society changes and how modern life engulfs us, your word is true. It may be simple, but it is true. We're praying that God will cause us to take him by his word. By renewing our mind. Making our minds and perceptions and worldviews be aligned with this simple word of God. Lift up a prayer, somebody. Lift up a prayer. Ma sabro tere bahande lebos re kaba le ma sanda bra lebro su tere bere 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 bosi. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you draw our minds to your word. May we know the truth of your word. May we accept the truth of your word. Though simple, oh God. We pray that we will walk in that word. We will move in that word. We will act in that word. In the mighty name of Jesus. Change our mindset, oh God. Change our hearts, oh God. May we meditate upon your word. May we walk in its truth. In the name of Jesus. 
Masuto le bele 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 behandos. Rabata le cabrande le bos. We thank you, O oh God. This is our last prayer. We're interceding for all that are in diverse needs and diverse challenges. We believe that salvation is a total package. Redeemed us from the powers of darkness into light. Once we were blind, now we can see. We may have been weak, but now we are strong. We may have been poor, but now we are rich in Christ Jesus. There's a transformation that goes on. There's a change, there's a shift. When a person begins to put on the helmet of salvation in Christ Jesus, we're lifting up a prayer that every area of struggle, every area of challenge, every area of need, physical, spiritual, emotional, may Jehovah God descend in our abode. May He reside in that situation and bring a transformation even in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody open your mouth and intercede, intercede, intercede. Rabo si de lelelebrosi. By virtue of who we are, by virtue of whom you have made us to become children of God, saints of the Most High, we are praying in the name of Jesus. May every portion that belongs to us, Father, come to pass. We receive that grace. We receive that breakthrough. We receive that healing. We receive that peace of mind. We receive that confidence. We receive that unction in the mighty name of Jesus. Descend in our midst, O oh God. We have the identity. We have the authority. We pray for the confirmation of it. May it begin to manifest in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Rabo sita brandele bo si handabra. Luka bo sita yandelele. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Mando ori basu terebebe. Rabata satayande. Thank you, Lord. Let's be silent in your spirit for a few moments. We're talking about your mindset. We're talking about your perception and perspective. We're talking about your worldview. We're talking about the things that run daily in your mind fear and doubt. We're talking about the decisions that you have to make on a daily basis. Our prayer and our supplication this morning is the Lord will make us make the right decisions according to his word. But we will not just listen to the noise that is going on and substitute it for his simplicity of his gospel. But we will stay steadfast in his word. Above all, somebody, the Lord is changing your mind. So you've been stubborn for so long. Stubborn for so long, so, so long. Yet you are saved. You are in that helmet of salvation. I pray that right now the Spirit of God will change that mindset. Even in the name of Jesus, may He change that mindset. That people will see you and say, what happened to you? And say, I just put on my helmet of salvation. And therefore the infiltrations of the lies of the enemy has no place in it. Everything that used to be in there has been purged out. In the name of Jesus, that you begin to walk in your purpose. Though it might not be smooth, though it might not be that wide and free, but you will still be walking in that purpose because that's who he has purposed you to become. Change that mindset. Allow the Spirit of God to work on you right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Masutabra. So we bless you, O oh God. We give you all praise and honor and adoration. Even for your short word this morning. Assuring us of who we are in Christ Jesus. That there is therefore no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. None. Zip. Because the spirit of life has replaced the spirit of death. And that came through Christ Jesus. Therefore, as we dawn on our helmet of salvation, we take our identity, we walk in our identity, we act based on the authority in that identity. 
that nothing that the enemy has said concerning us will come to pass. We are working in our purpose for who you have made us to be. I pray, O oh Lord, if we've been battling with so many things in our mind that are not aligned with the simple gospel that we are saved by grace through Christ Jesus, may you change that mindset in the name of Jesus. And above all, may you edify our spirit that we'll be able to take on that mantle based on who you have made us to be and begin to appropriate it. We are standing properly armed. And one of our weapons, you said, is the helmet of salvation. As we don it on, oh God, may no lie of the enemy have a chance in our mind. May no ungodly thought infiltrate in here. May no evil concept and malice come into this mind. And even if they are, we evict them in the name of Jesus. And pray that we, oh God, will be pure, lovely, noble, of good report. Because that's what we will be thinking of. By your grace, let it be our portion, even now and forevermore. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody, I know you've been blessed by this powerful message and a time of prayer. It's time for us to offer our substance unto the Lord. Even as we offer, mixed with faith that even if you're looking for a breakthrough, it shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. And on your screen, you will see the medium through which we will give our offering and our tithe on the screen. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. I will lift him up high. Everywhere I go, I will lift him up high. I say, The Lord is good. I will lift him up high. Everywhere I go, I will I say, the Lord is good, I will lift him up higher Everywhere I go, I will lift him up higher The Lord is good, I will lift him up higher Everywhere I go, I will lift him up higher Come on, say, lift him up
time to be here with the Lord. We want to thank all of you for tuning in. Uh, we hope to see you again next Sunday, same time, right here at PWC Worcester Virtual Church Service. A few announcements before we go. Sunday school starts right after the service at 1130. Parents, please get your kids together, even as they also have a chance to worship the Lord. We also are going to have our throne room service every Wednesday, as you know, 10 a.m., Join us even as we lift our supplications unto him. And every Friday, 7 p.m., also our encounter service, both of which are going to be via Zoom. We also want to announce that we prepare ourselves because next Sunday uh, is a communion service because next Sunday is the first of the month in July. We bless the Lord for what he's done and even ushering us into another glorious month. We know that his grace will always be there and to carry us through to the end. God bless you for coming. Shall we all receive that benediction? May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face continue to shine upon you. May this helmet of salvation, which is freely yours, come to pass in your life that you would manifest it, that all would know that indeed you are the redeemed of the Lord. Walk in your purpose and walk in your destined path. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Remain blessed. God bless you. Oh!